Hello, it's me again, Knut Andre Vixelon from Norway. I just finished this onion and I'm gonna show you what, I'm, what it is. It's this one. And uh, I spent a lot of time on different things, textures and uh, everything. And I explain in the video. So, with this, I hope that you like it. That you share my videos on social media, that you give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and you find a donation button to Patreon or a Patreon button and a subscription button and playlist and video in front here. And uh, yeah, until next video, keep on watching, keep on sharing, keep on living and keep on painting. Stay cool. Yay! I'm starting up a another one third thirty-five point thirty-five centimeters still life is this beautiful onion. Must be one of the most beautiful onions I've seen. Usually I don't paint red onions because I found they find them quite boring. But this one is really nice and I'm looking forward to making a very nice painting of it. So, it's going to be on this canvas and uh, watch me paint. Okay, there we go. First I do, of course, the same thing as I always do. I have to measure. I'm going to measure the object. Also with a, so it's like this, and that's too high. I have to because I want to get the whole thing. Let's see now, that is correct. Yeah, it's like this with the thing. Let me see. It's one. Well, I can't do that. I need to have some. So I'll do it like this, I think. And that is one and a little bit so I get the palette in. Yeah. Yeah. I want to have the whole palette in. Palette. That's what it's called. Yeah, and that's good. So. As usual, I start with uh, the point, you know, I just do it like this. And actually I want it to be a little bit here, actually. Here, so. Careful now, so I don't fuck it up. Don't win it. Totally. Yes. Also, I want some. You know, I wanted to have. See this. Yeah, so I get some foreground. Isn't it? Okay, it's like this, just place it like this, see, okay, I want to hold palette in. Have to be careful. Not to 
Fuck it up. It's very strange because my brain tries to tell me that the palette is bigger than it is. But it's not, so. Comes in the air, like this. You know, I used to be a welder. Okay, this one is there. And it's there. These are there. Near here. Approximately. Don't like this. This is this is my brain talking to itself. If I if I didn't talk out loud now, I would actually I just heard my brain talk to itself. <laughs> it's fine. Um, okay, and here uh, the red onion is quite difficult because it's. The reddish color can be hard to work with. It is quite uh, one-dimensional in a way. Uh, it's only nuances in a, in a yellow onion. You have more different colors from green to all the other colors. In this one it is a little bit limited so yeah. such good training to do these still lives Luckily, I have the still the thing that grows, and uh, in Norway we call it. We call it in Norway actually. Uh, it's good, yeah. It's like shot. <laughs> you pronounce it shot. It's like shot off from it. So we use the same word as we. Use when we shoot with a gun. Scud. We say scud. Shot. Scud. And this is what we also call this thing. Comes out of the onion. YouTube channel picks up the pace soon because I posted so many videos. The problem was I did nothing, I knew nothing about um, algorithms, and tagging. And just a year ago, actually, I learned about tagging. I didn't even, well, I tagged some of the videos a little bit. But I didn't really know the importance of it. I thought if you just put some video out called painting something, somebody would pick it up. Or, but it's not how it works. And um, uh, I didn't start building it until quite late, actually. The first years I just put it up for fun. And now, actually. Well, I have some subscribers that comes every day, but it's not a big success. Maybe I'm too fucking boring to listen to or something, I don't know. Well, my, my videos are usually long and crude. It's not nothing cool. Nothing 
no no big butt to show no fat ass no big tits <laughs> just kidding um So much bullshit that gets a lot of views on YouTube. So sad. It's like we wonder why there's a war. Wars in the world. And we spent, I was at the gym today and I saw this dating. This is dating or this it's called Farman. It's a bunch of single people, single girls that goes to this farm. To this farmer or young farmer, and he's gonna pick one of them. It is so disgusting. It's just I wanna vomit when I see these programs and these horrible, sad people running around trying to find a great love. And it's just so sad. Anyway, uh, see what I'm doing, sketching, okay, actually it's half past eight and uh, seven in the morning. And um, it's typical me turning everything on his head. Yeah. Now you can also see what colors I use. I start here with some, and um, the kind of the blue is in the middle. You have the uh, earthy colors here. And kind of just moves around. Hmm. Depends. I, I'm not always using. I'm using a different kind of palette now. So I'm holding it a little bit different. So the colors are. But it's always always the same rhythm. I always put the colors basically the same place. And if you don't do that, you're gonna get really confused because it's like moving around the. The keyboards on a piano. If you're gonna play music, every time you're gonna play, somebody move the keyboards, uh, the the keys, <laughs> and of course you can't, couldn't possibly play because you had to reinvent, had to learn it over and over again. Now, of course, you can see the colors, so it's it's easier than if it was a piano, but. The, in principle, you are learning some movements, some motions, and um, if you move around with that, if I lack a color, or I don't have a certain color, or I get sometimes a little bit confused. However, I do depend on some predictability when I paint. Also, I paint kind of rough now in the beginning, so it's not that important. I should actually try to concentrate a little bit better now because I'm making a mess out of it actually. Focus here. This one is up there. This is not that high. Okay. This goes up here. Really just moving around now, messing with it a little bit. Okay, this one is not that much. This goes more in like this. Does it? No, no, this one comes actually more in. This one goes more out, so yeah. Uh, some people are using projector. I think that is cheating. I think if you do that, everything will, will fall into place. 
way too easy. So I prefer to fight a little bit with it. I really love these pencils. Da Vinci. Maybe I should call Da Vinci. Maybe they want to. Since I'm talking about her all the time, maybe they want to support my work. Or oh, whole oh, oh, paint. I'm going to call them. I'll send them a mail. Because they'll get a sponsor. That would be really great. I used to use a lot of Vincent Newton actually, but Old Home has this has a much better quality or much more pigment. Of course it's also more expensive. If you want more pigment you have to pay for it. But you get longer with it. Can paint longer and yeah. Mm. Now this this palette becomes a motif within its own right, and that is the kind of a point with this painting that I so yeah that's the blood umber and you have whole sienna and you have Van Dyke Brown, Burnt Umber, and Raw Umber. Then you have a Brilliant Light something, and you have a couple of white. Um, what is this called again? Um, Yeah, it's Naples Yellow and Naples Yellow Light. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and they give, you know, if you're only, always gonna keep on, it's nice to have some broken white colors to kind of mix into the different colors and you don't really need it. it to me it just made things a little bit easier so I don't have to mix so much but in the beginning when I was painting, I was actually only using three colors and I didn't use black. I think it was more like a, a roses than anything else, but it's very hard for people to control the black and as it was for me too, because 
we tend to, if you use black, I use actually some black now, but I intuitively know exactly the amount I need to put in. And I always put in other colors, so I kind of keep it alive. Sometimes I can see that people who doesn't know how to use black, they kill the colors with it, and that is the same thing. Um, I also use a cadmium, cadmium um, orange, and I used um, cadmium um, a little lighter, cadmium yellow, and then an actual cadmium yellow and uh, the lemon so I use different you don't need to do that you can actually mix most of these colors from uh, but I think it makes things easier if you have too many colors you're just going to get confused Of course, I have the Titan Titan Wit Titan White, not Zinc. Zinc is too fluid for me. I like the Titan because it is uh, it is very thick and um, clay-like, especially the old hole. Um, so. And that's what I recommend using. Um, and of course, you have the cup lock. The cup lock is like this. And you have the cadmium red, and the cup lock is actually behind here. Uh, and then I have the reds there. You know, this I place this a little bit for right now, but I have the vermilion. And I have the cadmium red right beside it, cadmium red. So that, that is how my colors are in the palette. And I have some, have French ultramarine, and I have cobalt, and I have um, the, the beauty of all blue. That is the Prussian blue, which I just I had no idea how to use in the beginning. I just couldn't. I just couldn't use it, and uh, suddenly I started doing some photos that needed a special kind of blue, something I can twist between the greens and all over. And and I found I fell in love with Prussian blue, which is just. Blueberries on tube. <laughs> you get it on your clothes, you'll never get it off. That's quite funny. Blueberries on tube. I mean, I sometimes I wonder if you could actually take Prussian blue and make or take blueberries and make Prussian blue. <laughs> That'd be fun. Because blueberries have the Prussian blue. This one has to be Yeah. So now we've got some instructions. So okay. Uh, might wonder why. I need some more white, actually. Yeah, I also use this one. It's called Brilliant Light Red. Uh, it's going to be there. So 
It's kind of a reddish broken color. This oh, it's up here actually. Ah, okay. And I have the one called Brilliant Gel Light. So this is reddish and this is light. So they are both quite warm. So there are four of them. You have Naples, you have the reddish brilliant light, and then you have the one I showed you, and a uh, couple more there. Mm. So, but you don't need to, the things you need to do is to study the color circle and uh, understand how nature creates the rainbow, how the shadows in the clouds are created by complementary colors that um, can be mixed in the shadows. And if you start to understand basic physics and the laws of color and nature, I think you're gonna come a long way because then you will know objectively what nature is doing. So try it out. Yeah, it's gonna be. Mm. Mm. I can feel I'm getting a little bit tired, so. Thick here, yeah, and this one is a little bit off. I think this has to be a little bit more over there. Stuff, but that's okay. Let's see now, one, one. Actually, it could be even lower. Uh, it's, it's actually quite correct. So, the reason I, I went for this background first now was to get that palette. The, if I did this too low, big, I needed to make this smaller, and that wouldn't look good. So, that's why I did the background first this time. Usually, I start with the foreground, but that is also. I. I did start with the foreground, of course, but I, I did it in a little bit different way. And of course, the background is bright in this one, so I'm not actually creating that. You know, I usually start on a white spot there. And I keep building. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's three minutes. Do a little bit of foreground. I did some really hard training, you know, like in, in these rings when you lift your body. I think I got a little bit of Brock, as it's called in Norway, and 
sometimes it kind of starts to hurt a little bit. Hope I don't need that. I hope I don't need a uh, operation. <laughs> Maybe it's a cancer. Maybe it's cancer. I don't know. Also, it's getting worse. So. Yeah. This, this, and the shadow, the shadow, it's in here, it's all the way, here. oops, people are waking up, funny, I always go to bed when people are waking up. So, uh, zoom a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna work some more with the onion. Half an hour more, and then I'm going to go to bed. Okay, on your on your own. Oh, no, no, I need to get a no, I don't need that one. Let me see. Um the Prussian blue. Prussian the German blue. Huh. I wonder why they call it that. Maybe it's made in Prussia. In Germania. Germania. And this one. This. And it kind of leans over a little bit. So I need to get that right. Small down here. And the back there. This one comes this way. This one, yeah, there are some. The reason why I like this onion so much is so much happening in the front here, and it's not the ordinary onion. Um, it has a lot of textures and different. Things that red onions usually don't have. Hmm. 
could see now it cracked up like this. Then I go in and uh, put in some. It's going to be difficult to get that feeling of it leaning over. Um, I think I've done this too wide. <coughs> Maybe. It's not that tall on the top. It's probably going to grow like crazy in the next days. You can actually see it growing while I'm painting it. So, and I need to move this. Fuck. That's ah. Now I see. That is what happens when you don't concentrate. You do mistakes. And you have to start moving stuff around. This one is going to be lower. Ah, it's going to be difficult. It's probably because I didn't start with that sketch as I used to. So I, I got a little bit cocky, I think. I felt I was too much in control because I made another sketch today. It went very well, very fast. And then you get a little bit cocky. It's like if you win one fight, it doesn't mean you're going to win the next fight. You have to prepare, be alert. Because if not, I'm going to be outsmarted. I'm outsmarted myself in this one. <clears throat> yeah. This one is going to be a tiny bit more. This one goes in there. Yeah, okay. Ah! There's a medium. Oh, sorry. Oh, I used the medium just when I used the medium I I, I basically uh, say I basically only use it to wash my my pencils between the layers. Like I had red on this and I took the medium and I washed it off. And um, that is why this one looks like this, because I don't change pencils in between every layer. Yeah. See now. Yeah, that's good. I actually painted it a little bit bigger than natural. Because I got cocky. I didn't, didn't focus and concentrate. Bad boy. It's a bad boy. Yeah, that's going to transition there is going to be quite difficult because the background and the foreground is does kind of look like one another quite much. But I 
just have to work with it. So. And of course you drag it over here. I need to have the shadow on the knees. Difficult since I took so much. Away. I should have concentrated a little bit better. So now you can chew on that one. Maybe you learned more than I did by watching me fucking up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. This is going to be a, a journey. Mm. It's going to be hard not to crack. But in the end, I will make it happen. Now I'm starting to understand. He's a little bit. Listen to that store. And the store upstairs. It's a nice, very nice place actually. There's a Pakistani guy, a nice bird, nice guy, who has this store. There's a huge room, it's like big as my studio but it's high underneath the roof and I'm dreaming of I just bought this studio uh, this year and I would like someday to walk up to this guy upstairs and give him a give him an offer he can't refuse as you say of course not not kill him but Paying him a sum of money to close down the store and sell it to me. That would be great. Because it would be a brilliant studio and a gallery. And if I could use this cellar also as a gallery and a studio, it would be like having a castle. And if an apartment in the building became Vacant, I would like to maybe even buy an apartment at some point. So, yeah. That is why you have to become patrons so I can earn more money and get all my dreams come true. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm 50 now. I think I wasted too much time to reach most of my dreams. So, if you can learn that, don't waste your time. So one thing I try to tell my beautiful daughter, do not believe for a second that you have a lot of time because you don't. So, it's getting better. And she's doing design clothing, and that's a harsh occupation to succeed in. So if you want to succeed, you're going to have to work your ass off. 
same as you have to do as an artist. All these choices, you know, you do the oh, look at my hand. <laughs> Gods. I've been asked how do you paint or how long time do you use in the painting and stuff and a still life of course takes not that much time as a as a painting with a human being in it, because a human being is way more complex than a still life. But then again, I do use a lot of time on the still lives also. Some cups here, by the way. Uh, yeah, there are two actually. Uh, it's very time consuming work, not the sketching process, but the finish. That is why I have never seen. You can see, I, I, I do make the video of the painting of the sketching process. As you see, I usually do that. Of course, if it was a huge figure painter painting, I couldn't do that. But oh, I don't see. Yeah. So funny. You see things all the time. If I should do a big, like a big figure painting. And to show the sketching process, it would at least take one or two days. Like it would be a, at least a, maybe even a 20 hour video. Not more, but more, much more actually. So, but for a still life, it's easier. I don't have to worry about many things like yeah. yeah this one comes actually in here Funny, it's a bunch of neurons firing in my head. I think that is one of the reasons why it makes me so calm because it focuses my neurons. When you have a brain like me, you're, it's very much on. All the time, it's very hyperactive. But when you paint, it's just a certain amount of certain parts of the brain who is firing. And the good thing, as you can see now, um, is that I can actually talk and paint at the same time. It would be easier for me to sketch this if I didn't talk, if I didn't make a video. Uh, yeah, how does it hang on a wall? Well, there's a nail coming out here, just as you know. And it will also be painted in, so you can actually see it, it comes kind of out here. Um, yeah. Anyway, where was I? 
you know, it focuses the brain, calms me down. And I guess that is why, that is why I fell in love with painting in the first place. Silence. Beautiful silence. Even when I'm talking, I feel calm and silent. Hmm. Has to be fixed anyway. Thing is going to be difficult to see. It's always difficult to find the right angle there. But as a gazelle, as a start, it's fine. It's fine. <sighs> Just need some more. You see, I mostly I just use pencil. I used to use small knives and stuff, but I usually now only use the pencils. Maybe I should go back to doing a little bit more with knives, like the spoon, the painting spoon. Well, you know, you, you find your way at the end and I'll stick with it. Maybe the, the, the textures and stuff would be more diverse if I if I used different tools. I don't know. Mm I think it's kind of starting to fall a little bit over now, which means I'm on the right track. The shadow is coming out here. See, that was a warm color, there was too much black in it. Yeah. I need to do some stretching after this because when I stand like this my legs tend to stiffen up a little bit with my arthritis. Actually I saw this documentary or this guy on YouTube said that actually the arthritis pain isn't necessarily due to 
uh, damage in the joints, it can actually be that if you have some pain, you start moving about so much. It's like me, I used to be, not long ago, very flexible. And then I got actually some back pain. Uh, and uh, I stopped doing that much Taekwondo and I did more strength training because it's kind of easier it's more like eating pizza compared to eating salmon with broccoli and I more and more stiffened up and I did that mistake this summer too. I didn't train any Taekwondo and I did a lot of strength training. And in the end, I, when I came back to Taekwondo, I was stiff like fuck. So I just, and I have been using a hell of a lot of time on stretching for the past three weeks and now. It actually starts to bear fruit. It took a while, but I'm gonna keep on doing it until I'm flexible again. The worst thing is the middle split. Uh, that's where I'm stiffest. That's kind of funny. I used to be super flexible in side kicks and stuff. Almost kick right straight up and. So, it's time to lose it. Okay, I'm 50, but I have a trainer, an Iranian trainer called Saeed Muhammadi. I've been training with him for many years, and he still kicks like that. So. He's older than me, so. so it's not the age, it's how you use the body. Also gained too much weight. I was 84 kilos a while ago, 84 and less muscle. So that also took a toll on my joints. So now I'm losing weight I'm down to almost 76 from 84. I'm gonna lose a few more kilos and then maybe I and get flexible again because I really miss hard I do hard martial arts training but I really miss doing the kicks and things I'm gonna take my fourth black belt in Taekwondo also and I don't want to do it until I can kick good again so now, this is actually getting somewhere, quite beautiful actually, now, just a lot of, lot of paint, but I'm becoming more and more a painter, that is so strange to see, every time I, and this is just, oh, I love it. Funny, the more I paint, my mom always says, Oh, you're working too hard, you're killing yourself with working. And you know, painting for me is my vacation. It is when everything feels right. When I'm in the moment, when I'm in my flow. It is just so great being me. So, working is not my problem. What's my problem? What the problem is, is when you are distracted. Like I promised myself if I ever see another episode of Walking Dead, 
I will take myself into the backyard and execute myself because I'm a waste of carbon. Uh, and I see that the fucking series has started up again and my brain starts to crave to see it. And I say, no, no, don't go there. Because then I have to execute myself. Anyway, don't waste time on bullshit. It's so, so the series has is just so bad. It's just even the shooting scenes are ridiculous. You can see they are shooting blanks. And, I mean, if you have a lot of don't have much ammo, why do you shoot on automatic all the fucking time? I mean, nobody would shoot on all. First of all, you don't hit anything because it's all random. Are you gonna win the gunfight? You have to aim. You have to aim and fire. Okay, that was two hours. No, it was one hour. Sketch. Onion. And I was ranting about everything now, except painting. Sorry about that. I have to do something when I'm standing here. I can't use music. I, I wish I could use a lot of music. But I try to stay on topic. I try to talk about painting. But you also see me paint. So... I don't have to talk about something you actually see all the time, do I? Put in some yellow to the red here, so I get some more dimers. I think this start to fall into place now. And then it has to then it has to dry and I will start do that on that spot. Ah, fuck. I really need to go down to the store today and get buy some colors and some pencils. I have a hell of a lot of work to do this week because I'm gonna be in these exhibitions so to dig through it like a rat through a wall. And the good thing is that I have just turned off my head. Didn't go out this weekend. I basically haven't seen people except from in the gym. And it doesn't even bother me. I become so peaceful when I work like this. I just turned of everything so I don't mind of course you can't do it over time because in the end you would start to go nuts there's a shadow behind there let me put that in before I put myself to sleep I think I have cancer. Do you hear that? That was actually that. It's like my intestines are. We arranged a little bit. So I need to go to the doctor. It would be. I do have a lot to do. So. 
having cancer in the intestines would not be a good time right now. Of course it would focus my brain and I might even be able to finish my biography and some of the book I've been writing on. Uh, but I'm not ready for death yet. That's I wouldn't. I wonder how I would react actually if I if there was a cancer I had in my stomach. Would I get that? You know when you get a bad, um, you get this bad um, message and you can feel it affects your whole body. Just boom, you just feel it in in every bone. Like a, like a friend of mine died of a heart attack a few years ago, and uh, I could just feel it. Boom, and I felt the same thing when um, I was deeply in love with a girl it's basically six years ago I saw her but five years ago and um, when I realized I didn't go my way I felt that extreme sorrow um, I haven't been in love like that since before that actually anyway and I felt like death I wonder if I got cancer if that is the kind of same feeling I would get anyway I hope I don't die in an accident because I would feel no, I wouldn't feel anything but uh, it would be I'm cheated. I would be cheated if I wasn't around to meet nothingness right on. But even Christopher Hitchens said that he wanted to die in the active, not in the passive. But when he got esophageal cancer and he knew how the diagnosis was for how people die of it, he kind of changed his mind a little bit and said, well, maybe just disappearing in a haze of drugs might not be such a bad idea after all, because I mean, suffocating in your own vomit it's not a good way to go. Well, this became quite gloomy. Anyway, hope it's not cancer. And only a brook. And if it's cancer, I'll let you know. Then I'm gonna make my cancer journey video. My dying journey video. Have you noticed that no one actually you can go to as many funerals as you must please, well, you can go again and again and it's so hard to actually relate death to yourself, it's always the other people who die, it's not you, it's not me, it's the other ones, it doesn't concern me, that is not, it's not going to happen to me and you can I'm a, I'm a conscious person, I'm an atheist and I know I'm going to die and all that, but still there's a part of me that refuses to acknowledge this 
fact, this brute fact, that we all are going to fucking die. Um, it never stops puzzling me that... But I think it's, it's maybe a thing that we have evolved to ignore. For many reasons, I mean, if you were constantly afraid of death, you would, you would be quite paralyzed, actually. You wouldn't go hunting, you wouldn't go into war, you wouldn't go and protect yourself from fights, you wouldn't, especially when we evolved in the savanna of Africa. I mean, if, if the fear of death was too big, they probably would have died out, actually. So, yeah, there was something there. Okay. Yeah, well, it's an onion. It's a um, sketch. It's uh, quite a nice sketch. It's very brutal. It's very unfocused. Well, it's nice after all. Okay, just need white. I'm gonna place a couple of strategic. Well, let's just start. Okay. It took a little bit longer than I thought to sketch. Because I didn't focus and concentrate that well in the beginning. So now you know what you're not going to do. Do not. Do not not focus. So. much higher than also the white in the background. Just have to I'm just building the basis now for the next level. And I'm at the point where I can't stop because now I'm getting hyperactive. So why not just keep painting? Not so bad. Hmm? Yeah, okay, I won't be able to 
and hunts it more now anyway because there's too much colour on it and it all starts to just mix when I put it on. Uh, yeah. Maybe push it down a little bit in the shadows to get some more. Yeah, something like that. And I um, want to saw this one. It's a little bit more. It's... Yeah! Oh, my stomach. Cancer. I know people have died of cancer, very young. I had a beautiful... Oh, she was really beautiful. It's not that it's less tragic if people are not beautiful, but... She was this redhead, Lena, her name was Lena. She had this beautiful redhead. I remember the first time I saw her, she was so beautiful. Um, she had this kind of white skin, beautiful face. I actually have a painting of her that I never finished, so I think when I have some photos, I think I'm going to finish it and make in a way a relic there. She had red hair, kind of a classical big butt and small waist and beautiful face. But she was sunbathing all the time. And I warned her so many times. She came to me as a model and she was red as a cooked hummer. And then she went to England to go to an art school. And suddenly she came home and she had gotten melanoma cancer. And a while after that she sadly died. And I had this huge painting of her. Two nude figures. You can't see her face actually. Yeah, you can, in one of them you can. And um, Huge painting too, it's like 240.160 centimeters. And I never knew what to do with it. There's a big bird in the no no it's a skeleton in the background hovering over her. She lies in the bed. And um, it was supposed to be about death and stuff. And it's so ironic and she died. Cancer. 27 years old. 26. So sad. And, I guess. and the same thing can happen to me, to you, to anyone. You're alive and then suddenly you're gone. Nobody actually noticed, unless the people close to you. She also gets over it after a while. Unless my parents wouldn't get over it, of course. So, that would be horrible. My daughter would be very, very sad, I guess. But she would get over it, she's young. So. Anyway, death is a strange thing. I think about it every single day in some form or another. And everything I've been talking about now, while I have been painting, is the thoughts that I, kind of the flow of thoughts that I discuss with myself, painting, in peace, so, if you don't want to know what to do with your life, get, get a creative hobby, 
something that gives you a feeling of meaning and stick with it. One thing I've learned, entertainment, porn, TV series, buying shit, all these things can't give you the right kind of flow. And on that note, I am closing down and tell myself that I won't be able to get any further today. Okay, stay cool. That was one uh, 120. Okay, second layer on this one. And I will do my lazure. It's just like this, two colors. Uh, Prussian blue and black. Uh, no, no, sorry, not Prussian blue for heaven's sake. It would be green and blue. Uh, it's uh, ultramarine, French ultramarine or just ultramarine. It depends what, what I have actually. So this one is French ultramarine. It has this bluish or reddish hue to it which I love because it also gives the warmth to the surface and um, I had some uh, chef anis on first and I let it dry so now I will just keep painting and see how it mixes into the different textures and gives it some life, something to work with. And one other painting now, right now, which I just did actually. Same process with a red apple with leaves, not the small one on. You want so, yeah. <coughs> Okay, I need that. Where the hell did I put that? <coughs> to lose it. That too, this spoon or knife or whatever you call it. I'm really stiffening up now. My legs have been standing for so long. I need to do some yoga later as an exercise. Now this became a little bit too reddish on that side. I should have more blue there and reddish should, should be on this side. So maybe I should use some cobalt. You can use different blues and different colors or the different... Um, if I only use this... Uh, well it is quite warm so I just use some blue instead because it's bluer on it on this side so I put some more blue into it and then this will mix and because on this side it's a very strong light here it's a little bit more subdued subdued uh, yeah
so. And then I change the palettes and I start molding. So as usual I will start in the lighter areas because it gives me I need to put a little bit more towards me actually. So I have to turn on my palette a little bit. It's a good thing to get it right the first time. We're just gonna start fucking up. It's not good. Let me see. There's a very strong light here, so I start with that one. And there's some kind of a bond goes all the way to this and then there's a little bit different colors here and this one you can actually see it and yeah I do see that I changed a little bit because they are growing like crazy actually so this one will probably be up here before I'm finished but that's okay that's a little bit of fun by painting a growing onion. I tend to change while you paint. That's kind of fun. It's getting a little bit bigger. I do that later. And what I do like with this onion is the red and orange and the different colors that are actually here which gives this onion a very special very special, very special actually to be a red onion is extreme extreme onion <laughs> so there's a shadow of on it there I have so many things I have to do today. I have to work with two more still lives after this. Maybe I should actually do the landscape first. That might be a good idea. Then get some sleep. Just a few hours. Then my framer is coming. And then I have to work with the figure painting. So I have to kind of plan every hour and every day now because I have actually I should have delivered some paintings in a couple of days. Actually in a couple of days I have to deliver a couple of paintings. But We just send on Wednesday. That's the last chance. Usually it would be Thursday. For some reason they changed it, so it's still one day. And that's the problem with time. Uh, I've been wasting too much time when I have time. And then when I don't have time, I work like I take maybe three weeks and makes it in, make it into the workload of two or three months and two months. And it is just crazy because you go into this mode where you only work. I haven't met any friends. I haven't done anything 
So I'm now going a little bit to the gym. Then I just had to drop the Taekwondo training because it's too hard, it would take too much energy. But if you have a even even out the work time and you 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 do you do you can do everything. You can work the eight to ten hours a day because it's like being on the fucking dance floor. Painting is just the most beautiful thing. And um, then you can even if you do the work in general you can you can also just take a week somewhere in Malaga or whatever, just get some sun. I never see any sun, not even in summertime because I usually work at night and then I sleep all day and the summers just keeps on slipping away. Usually I go to New York once a year, but I didn't even do that. I maybe do it before Christmas, but we'll see. Maybe I'll be in an exhibition, I'm not sure yet. So, yeah. Blah blah blah. Anyway, painting, painting a red onion. I like to. <laughs> I'm actually in a good mood. I haven't been doing anything, and it's not like I'm able now to turn myself just totally off. And my studio. It's also very big, and if I, ha I have the internet, I have the baits, I have news, I have music, I have kind of everything I need here. It's almost like sometimes I, I wonder if I could just stay down here and <laughs> go, go out, but you know, we are social beings, so and sometimes we need to see girls and you know, people in general. Okay, shadows. It's like going to enhance this side so you see what I mean. Also there is a beautiful shadow going you know, over there. Um, I will first go in with Okay, there wasn't any more battery left so I just have to start where I slipped uh, I was going to put in some um, some um, light on that side just to, you know, I'm using the medium mostly just to clean my pencils uh, that is things you have to figure out yourself how you prefer to use now the medium I put on here is now basically mixing into the color uh, or to the color I put on so if you see what I mean, and that was way too much. Then I dampen it down again. Do like this, maybe, and then I go back and forth. Like now, I just build a thick layer there, so it comes kind of out, and I can also understated we're doing something like that and now the palette is almost falling in into the wall in a way but it will feel like it and when I do the, the shadow there it will feel like it's yeah I'm gonna show you 
Sharia. I'm getting so used to talking to the camera now, it's almost like I'm talking to the people. I'm just becoming psychotic or something. See, I do like this, and I do wet and wet. Wet and wet, wet and wet. It's way too blue. Way too blue. But it's just the beginning. I want to have it. Yeah, it's basically the right. Uh, what I should have done there is using a little bit of black in it to give it a more greenish tone compared to the reddish there. And I also have to build out this because it's actually coming a little bit longer out. Mistakes here I see in the drawing. That is the thing, I, I can see things as I go along. Then I go back in and I just fix that problem. That way I'm kind of a sucker for detail. So many ways you can manipulate colors. The, the pastels in contrast to... Sometimes it's better to Instead of building that one out, is to build out the things that are around it. So in the end, it actually feels like giving it the basically the opposite effect to get where you're giving it. Yeah, you should believe you have to build this one coming out, but you build here. Best way to do this in a way like this. Use some of that, some of that, and then go back into it. You go like this. So I keep some of that shadow, and then I can go in again, and I then enhance this again in the wet paint and then I can do different things and see what works the best. I think this was the best way to drag it like this. I have to be a little bit... Now this one is going to be a little bit more down so I kind of use both, I use all, all the things around here, I use this one, so I narrow this gap a little bit by doing that. And you don't want the same color in the background, so you have in the foreground, and you, I don't, so I go in here and I darken it, because it is actually dark like that. And I get more contrast. Now here there's some violets. Probably in contrast to this. Some violet is more like a violet-ish.
You know, I'm, I'm also, I never thought about how good I am, or if I'm this good or that good, is this people are better than me. You know, it's, it's, it's not in me. <laughs> it doesn't even concern me. Actually, my mother, she really hates when she sees some, somebody who is better than me or doing some good works that are at least as good. She hates it because she can't stand anyone being better than her son. And I tell her, who cares? There's always someone who is better. And why, why not just... Why not just give them credit? I mean, if somebody is doing very good work, honest work, I don't even have to like them to like their work, okay? It's better if I like them, because I even, if I even dislike them, that is when I really know I like their work, because my bias, disliking these people, or this person, or whatever, it doesn't matter. I can see the value of this person's work. But in many people, I feel among artists, it's even worse. And that might be because there's a lot of damaged souls, or I don't like the word soul since I'm an atheist, but damaged people who seek into that is just my hypothesis, that's how I see it, there's a lot of damaged, damaged kids, people who seek to more creative work, probably also because the, the artist's mind is usually a little bit more hyperactive than others, and uh, that leads to being bullied. Often, it can lead to more abuse at home. I think it can also lead to more sexual abuse because they are more outgoing, extrovert, not introvert. And these people have to think so much when they are growing up that they will have to do a lot more a lot more maybe even hiding actually behind this creative stuff and when you throw people like that into the artist environment who is full of alpha men and alpha women who is trying to basically eat each other alive it, yeah it, it leads to toxic environment that is my hypothesis that is my observations I don't I'm not claiming this is science but I think it could be a good idea to actually do some science about it. Now when I was a welder, people have told me that I was too strange to be a welder. <laughs> I was too strange to be an artist. I wasn't a typical artist, you know, a conceptual artist. I wasn't interested in it. So I had this fallout with most of the most of the teachers in art school there was a couple of people there who I really liked and one sculpture teacher who really surprised me by being more human than I thought and more um, willing to say positive things when there was something positive to to say. His name was Krzysztof Nasilowski. He even fooled around with one of my girlfriends. I think it was basically after I was 
over, but well, I don't really know. But he was, I mean, he was, he was not the kind of teacher or the kind of person I could have a have good conversations with. Maybe even today I would have problems with conversations because of the way he is. It's like he's looking through you with x-ray eyes. But his work was absolutely beautiful and I had such great respect for him because of his work, even if I didn't necessarily like him that much in the beginning. But he was one of the few teachers that when my paintings actually start to become something, he actually told me that when my things actually starting to evolve a little bit and I I actually started to, to started to take a little bit of shape. He tried to say that to the other teachers, but they didn't want to listen because they have already decided that this person is like this, period. And uh, that's our view and it will never change. He changed his view. He also helped me, which I've said probably on my other on my videos, helped me to see the difference between my objective, uh, between my subjective belief and objective reality, which was the beginning of introspection. We had this course called Mikumaku Inner and Outer Space, where we were measuring words and objects up against each other and discussing the meaning of words and it was almost like Star Wars when I was 10 it was a world before Star Wars and there was a world after Star Wars and it was the same thing with Mikro Marko and Krzysztof Nasilowski it was a world before and a world after <laughs> so but my first teacher in, in, in um, color was Sissel Kobosa and she taught me to lo love color and paint. She made me into a romantic in a way. I guess I've always been a romantic. Actually, girls tell me that I'm I'm a romantic, even but I'm trying to be one. So, yeah. Oh, well, started to rant, but the point is, the point is that the toxic environment of artists are not necessarily the best place to. That's why I don't have so many artist friends because I don't speak the RT language. I'm not a die hard leftist. I used to be, but I'm not anymore. I judge everything on its own merits and I study facts because I don't trust my own subjective opinion as truth. I need facts to follow it up and um, yeah, I don't believe anything as I say, I doubt everything and uh, yeah, that's the way to go in my submission. Okay, blah blah blah. It must be strange to see me paint and listen to all this. There was a woman who told me she loved to listen to me when I was painting. When she saw me paint, so that's good. I guess this is my... <laughs> it's going to be my legacy. 
thousands in the end, thousands of videos, only ranting, ranting about life, aging. You know, today I almost earned a dollar on, on YouTube. I mean, that dollar means that people have actually watched my videos. Uh, it means so much to me. It's so so funny. It's just a fucking dollar. <laughs> but that dollar I earn on YouTube. Ah. Uh, means so much. <laughs> I must laugh about that. You know it's the money that is hardest earned that is kind of the money you appreciate the most. It's like on Patreon, actually lose money on giving away paintings on Patreon or in my lottery, but the money I take in means more to me than the money I get from exhibitions, and that is way more, much more. It can be really a lot sometimes, and then I use, of course, and I have framing and I have a lot of expenses. But the point is that that's something as insignificant, really, in the big scheme of things it can mean so much. It's amazing. Yeah, well, actually, the Patreon money doesn't mean nothing it is actually yeah. it covers some of my expenses now so that's cool and hopefully it will grow and maybe even set me free from commission work and stuff like that so I can solely focus if I could get my patreon page up to a level where I could only concentrate about my exhibitions instead of a lot of a lot actually of uh, commission work it will be so liberating so that is why I do it it's not because I don't earn any money on my paintings because I do or it's because I want to have some predictability so I don't need to stress much and um, be freer. If I had to make like two or three paintings a month on Patreon, giveaway, a lottery, I could do that if they were like not too big and it's good training also and I could cover most of my expenses it would be great yeah okay I'm gonna stop filming now and just keep painting so I see you later okay <clears throat> so, is this progress of a kind or not? I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Shall we see? I'm starting to get tired now. I've been awake for 16 hours. And I'm starting to feel it.
just going to do some adjustments. And I'm going to let it dry. And I need to finish two other paintings today. So. difficult. That's the problem with the uh, red, the onions. It, red onion has this shine which is difficult to reach because you lose that shine if you put white into the paint. So in a way you have to build it up and then paint over the white with pure color to make the white shine true. Or you won't make it. So that's the solution and usually that takes a little bit of time. So, yeah. Anyway, I really don't need my glasses right now. Strange, it is getting colder, and the paints are behaving a little bit different. It feels more slippery, I think. So maybe it is time to start heating up this room. A little bit.
Un cano. Bubbles. Medium. If I sleep like five hours and four hours until my friend comes around, I think I can. Paint until tomorrow, sometime. This has to be wider, but not today. And I will also tamp down just a little bit. These scars are too strong, they will take over for onion. And we don't want that. I just have to repeat the paintedness of the dirt in these cups. Shine a little bit. See here, I just I take blue, reds, orange, some broken white type of color, 
and I cannot just let it mix in the brush strokes almost like a rainbow if you get my point the, the, the colors are side by side inside the brush stroke like this it's like yeah how you see the rainbow with stripes in then that's how I build a texture. Here is thicker, here is thinner, thicker. Like this, thick layer. Then it gets thinner up here. Same in here. Same thing goes for the colors here. I take uh, Hohenbach, Bernthenbach, maybe some red, and I just pour it on like that. And hair is thinner because I hold my finger there. And to show that, there's a small line here. some more vividness right here so I just take some yellow and I do like this and I do like this so I kind of mix the color straight on the canvas like that to bring it up a little bit then you can take a little bit of white and mix in. Maybe there's just a tad. Fuck, I'm getting good at this, explaining to people. I should become a teacher. Uh, I was quite good in teaching people in martial arts too, karate, taekwondo, 
usually I've been able to become quite good in what I have been interested in. But it's also all I can be good at. I mean, if I don't have any interest, it is just impossible for me to learn anything. And so is my daughter, actually. And, um, that can force you to make the right choices. And that is a good thing. You see? Shadow there. I don't think you can absorb more paints at this point. So I'm just going to put in that nail. It goes all the way in there. It's strange what eyes can do, huh? Take this motif and just bring it into my my visual system and repeat it. Strange. Do that, and it doesn't become a mush. Just put in a couple of whites, and then I will be done for today. Like this. No, I can't absorb any more paint. It just now just be a horrible mush. Yeah, I can't take any more. So
Some, not almost. Okay. Almost. And some more vividness in the foreground. Here. Need some life in the foreground. There's also some yellow in this, so you see, I just need it lifted it up. It's really hard to stop when you start, that's for sure. Anyway, It's nice to have some something happening in the foreground, so it's not dead. Okay, now we can dry to the next layer. I think. Was 24 minutes. My videos always become so long. I want to have a high view time on YouTube. But, I mean, if you want to learn something, you have to watch how it comes. How it evolves, so you see, I keep inching things closer and closer and closer until it is correct. And I'm not afraid. If you're afraid or too careful, it's like being in a fight. You are in a fight or you are not in a fight. When you are in a fight, you fight. You don't take any prisoners, you don't think about consequences, you just try your best uh, to survive. And it's the same thing with painting, really. Just go. And if you fail, you fail. I say sometimes. Less often now than before, the paintings can't win the fight and they can't really close the deal. I am quite used to winning by now. So. Yeah. 
Deze super. Almost. Okay, here we are, again, and again, and again, same shit, lazur, first, just a little bit now, I don't need that much as the first time, oops, too red, um, I want it a little bit more bluish this time, because of the, all the red in Funny how the textures just pops out. Always, it's always. Um, uh, I guess should I say it's. Um, it's kind of. Um, reward. Yeah. It's always rewarding to see how all these textures pops out when. Because then you can actually see all the brushwork you have been doing. And I love that. It's great. Just wait. So. Okay. I'm going to start carefully with the onion. I'm going to do detail. Maybe I should also do some close up in the work. See what I'm doing in a better way. Uh, yeah, or maybe not. so you can see better what I do with the onion. Okay. Just a little bit closer. Okay, let's see what happens. Yeah, I need, need a little white palette. Yesterday, whatever, 
really sure the time is kind of a little bit blurry for me right now because my work schedule has been basically 24 7 and I do have this studio in a big cellar it's quite big so it's nice actually I like it better and better I used to live in the center of the city and uh, had all these temptations to go out to a cafe or something like that instead of staying home and paint and doesn't like to go out to cafes and look at pretty girls. It's better to kind of focus the time instead of kind of diluting it into a lot of small bursts. Anyway, I start there. I can see I will get into some trouble because of the I always want a certain glow in my paintings uh, and if I can't reach that it really makes me a little bit depressed but I see here that with a red onion that glow that you usually get from the yellow spectrum or the reddish and yellow isn't that pre present in this onion it's a little bit up here, um, so I kind of have to work around it. I hate that I use that word kind of all the time because this is a friend I used to have told me that nothing is kind of, it is or it isn't. And that is true. Nothing is kind of. Why should anything be kind of anything? I mean, she was kind of a nice girl. He was kind of a nice but why? He was a nice girl or she wasn't. I mean, kind of. What the fuck? What is a kind of a good painting? Kind of? What the fuck do you mean by that? So yeah, that's an annoying word, which I hear myself using too much. In Norway they used to say, especially young people used to say, listen, especially in Oslo, listen. It means as if. But it's even worse, it's not even that, it's just, it's just, it's nothing. And it's just empty words. You can't really be, and you can actually leave it all. It is kind of, kind of, kind of something like, kind of, you can keep on kind of piling on. And you can use a lot of time and words, but you don't actually say anything. That's why I personally like when people say what they mean. And they, because kind of is like a cutout. It is, a, it is, a, it is not really taking a stand. I don't know how to explain. Anyway, it's kind of an onion. <laughs> well, maybe that would actually be true. No, it, it would be, it looks like an onion, but it's a painting of an onion. It's not kind of a painting of an onion. It just is. Okay. There's some, some uh, nice um, orange here in there. It's funny now you can see how it is. I, I can't do this with one layer. You can't go in deep like this with one layer because you don't have any textures to work with. You don't have any 
under layers to <clears throat> to bring to use as as a background for the next color and you don't actually you can use yeah blah 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 no, it's actually it's not to look like before that, there was just paint. And that is the point I was pointing out in the comment. There was this young girl, American girl, I think she, she's hearing voices. She's basically psychotic. God has told her to paint. And there's videos of her on YouTube and I posted one on one of my pages. I got it inside. She's not a good painter. And uh, some people think, what? what do you mean she's not a good painter? No, she's not a good painter. She is a superficial painter. And her paintings are overly dramatic. I mean, now I'm talking, okay, let me talk about the paint first. The paint is without substance, it is only superficial. She can paint a face, but there's no, there is no, there is no texture, there is no, um, there is no, there is no, take it, there is no substance, there is no paintedness, there is no Rembrandt in it, there is no, yeah, there is no classic skill, it's superficial, it looks like, it's good for the untrained eye. I can understand that because I would probably have been impressed myself a few years ago. Well, not a few years ago, many years ago actually. Uh, but when you have objective standards like me, like Rembrandt and the, the best painters in the world, and I sadly know that I'm not even up to their navel and I might be in the 50% compared to my objective standard which is the best in art history maybe 50% I would say she's a she's a 20 or a 30 okay but when you and then they say oh she's so young she she is going to evolve no that's the problem. She probably won't evolve because she's delusional. And she is actually believing in her own genius. And that is a that is a trap. Because she can't evolve, because she hasn't got that different that thing between objectivity and subjectivity. She doesn't understand the basic premise. Your objective reality isn't or your subjective reality is not objective reality. So when you hear God tell you to paint, he doesn't tell you to paint. First of all, if there was a God, I mean, wouldn't he have better things to do than to crawl down from heaven and to speak in, in a dreamlike form to a young girl and tell her to paint? But the fucking God would actually do something like that. There would be a mad God, a mad dog, you know? There's, there's a war, starvation, the universe is falling apart all the time. I mean, there's so much to do. And then to think that this God would actually come down from, the, from heaven or send her uh, subconscious, no, no. Not even that. She's hearing him, actually speaking to him. It's even if God existed, I would wouldn't believe that he was talking to her. Okay, and he doesn't even exist, so the the chance is like zero. There's a bigger chance. There's some space alien with a sense of humor that impersonates God, and does this just to fuck with us, okay? Just to fuck with this young girl, just to see what happens. Hey, let's see what happens now. 
Okay? So, the point is, she's young. Well, Picasso was eight years old when he basically uh, painted better than his very skilled classical trained father. Okay? He was a skilled painter. I mean, an objectively skilled painter when he was eight years old. And she is not. She's a superficial painter. And you also have to understand one thing. The brain can learn anything. That is why you see all these young girls or young people playing chess, piano, dance, uh, all the, you know, you can teach them anything. This girl has happened to have parents that has let her do a lot of painting. And she has reached a level of a little bit, a little bit over, maybe a little bit over mediocre, like a good amateur or a good beginner. But she's not a good painter. And that is very important. The thing she does is superficial it doesn't have any it doesn't have any depth or any any subject so, yeah. I don't know where I started out this rant but anyway well I can rant as much as I want uh, the point is that you to to evolve as a painter you have to have your feet nailed to the ground and personally I started out doing this when I was like 20, 21, 22 and I painted and drawed like a 10 year old only symbols and I, I didn't have that understanding of objective reality compared to my subjective belief I didn't know there was something as important as science or knowledge or I knew it but I didn't really know it I didn't really know the the magic consequence of of really understanding what knowledge means and what objectivity means uh, maybe it was a good thing because what I did was so bad that time that if I actually could see how bad it was I wouldn't be able to even keep going because it wasn't many years so a couple of years later I started to feel like when I actually started to become something or actually started to get some skill uh, I felt like everything I did was crap because the lights were suddenly I suddenly understood the difference between my own subjective opinion and objective reality. And that's the start of all self-criticism. So, that's that. Anyway, as you see, I still paint on this onion. And I hope you learned something. If you dis totally disagree with me, say you know, feel free to rebuttal me but don't never use your feelings as an argument use objective reality if you use your feelings I will become nasty I hate solipsism I hate crybabies I hate the kind of people who are wearing their their fucking feelings as this identity you know oh you hurt my feelings. Oh my God, you're so angry. You hurt my feelings. Oh my God. Oh, fuck you. Grow with thicker skin or stop discussing with people. I mean, if I should, if I should whine every time somebody told me something bad about me, I wouldn't do anything else. I would whine all day. I'd be a fucking crybaby. Like the students and universities in America now, they need safe spaces and people need comfort animals and plants. Get the fuck out of here. It's so ridiculous. You know.
know you don't want you live, you will die. And if it's in a plane crash, fine. At least you're gonna die in the active. At some point you're gonna see the seat in front of you smack into you like a razor blade and cut you in half. Okay, that is how you die in a plane crash. <laughs> and I don't mind. Because I am going to die. I have this thing in my stomach. It's probably just a broke uh, kind of intestines that has moved early because of my heart training. But it can also be stomach cancer. But I'm not going to run and worry myself to death. It's like, what the fuck? I mean, I'm going to die anyway. Okay, I'm going to the doctor to check it out, of course, well, because maybe I need, uh, need a small uh, operation to put it back in place. But anyway, don't be an ass, don't be a crybaby. And if you're a painter, if people tell you something, something you do might be wrong, or something you do could be better if you did or that. Fucking listen to them. Because you can actually learn something. We have to learn from someone. All of us. We can't we can't invent the wheel for every new generation. We have to stand on the we are all standing on the what does it say? We are standing on the feet of giants. No, the mobile telephone wouldn't be possible without Newton or Einstein or, or all these people who did the quantum physics and, and stuff. It wouldn't be possible. So, same thing with painting and art. Same thing with everything. We are standing on the shoulders of giants. And we can build on it in an honest way. Which I find to be the most intriguing thing about being alive. That standing here painting this way, I'm actually learning, taking what I learned from art history and I'm putting it into good use. If I should start without knowledge, I would do the same thing as, as the caveman did. Some, some abstract or so very simple, simple, simplified, um, simplified um, figures. Um, Whoa! We didn't have canvases and all that. So yeah, don't feel embarrassed if you learn something. And if you learn something from someone, acknowledge it. Don't say, oh, I didn't really learn it from him. I've experienced that. People come to me, oh, can you learn how to paint? Oh, please, I need to. And you teach them some. And a few years later, do they say that who, they, who started it for them? Nah. They were geniuses. All by themselves. And that is fucking bullshit. So, yeah. Okay. It's starting to evolve. Hmm? Don't you agree? Say, yeah. So. Okay, enough ranting, I'm gonna paint without you guys watching. Just gonna put in. Now, I didn't talk much about paint here, but I hope you saw what I was doing. You see all the, the different, how I just go about and I go back and forth and back and forth and I move around. Da, 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 da. Just building, 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 like sculpture. Da, da, putting on, taking away, putting on, taking away. Da, 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 da. 
And that's what we have to do. Okay? Yay! <clears throat> Yay! Seems growing strong. Uh, this is going to be kind of realist painting. This one's going to be that romantic actually, you can see. When you put on a motif many, many times you can have kind of, kind of, kind of. There we go again. Uh, you don't really... It's the white in the background that brings in this realist uh, dimension. Which I actually like. But it's always the more uh, dark, light things that are most easy to sell. People kind of like to have that uh, kind of, kind of, of course. They like to have um, romance on their walls. <clears throat> but I need to change painting now. I have three more to work with until I'm done. And I'm already tired, so I hope I... <laughs> Survive this is um, that's how it is to waste time. We have a lot of time. Um, the pleasure of painting would increase dramatically if I spent my time better. So there's no doubt about it. No. It's a boring fact. That was nice actually. See if I can do next time. This one is a little bit higher. The thing with me is that I don't use any um, I use a ruler or anything. I just start painting and then I Keep adjusting. So sometimes I get it a little bit wrong and have to correct it many times until I'm finished. All right. So I just have to live with it. It is the way I like to paint actually because uh, because it becomes more natural, I think. And also there, there will always be a little dissonance in it. Some kind of thing that isn't totally 100% okay. It isn't photographic, so it doesn't experience it as photographic. And I think that is a good thing. So, yeah.
some kind of gliding into each other. Just do it like this now and the next layer I just enhance it a little bit with small touch-ups, strengthening, strengthening it or everything. So colors to drag the tension over there and I will repeat a little bit of the yellow here like this so I drag in a way tension over there Okie dokie dokie, I'm going to do a touch up, uh, I'm just going to put on some better shape on this, so I can see the layers more easily, and I go in with some detail, and just give it a little bang. see more where I have to do some work. This painting is quite all raw actually. It is, uh, it is very realist, it's very direct, there is no there is not so much romantic stuff in it. It's just this onion palette space. So yeah. Need to enhance the lights and the, the shadows. Give it some more. Some more bang. Put it back. I want to start there. Maybe I should use. Ah, I can use this. Reddish in it too. So. 
now things slowing down as you can see it's more and more important to do the right things every time you touch it Maybe I should actually enhance the shadows instead. Maybe that's a better idea. So I get more contrast. Because if you get more contrast, you actually also get more light, of course. Because uh, without darkness, there is basically not that much light. And work on top of that. You see now we've got more, some more depth to it. And also here. The good thing now is that the uh, lasso is actually merging with. Fans. I have no idea how this will affect. I haven't studied that, how it will, how it will eventually affect some guy who's gonna. If I ever get that important, <laughs> uh, will this be a problem for a conservation conser conservator? I mean, and these paintings can be around for a while after I'm gone. So. Yeah, I was at the hospital and took this x ray on my hips, and my hips are basically gone. So. Probably need to do an operation soon. And, uh, maybe next year to get my flexibility back. I'm quite tired of pain. So. Pain is a crippling thing when it's not the martial arts kind of pain. I have no problem with getting hit and stuff, but kind of nauseating, slow pain like a toothache in your joints is not good. Need to concentrate.
called touch up. You go in and you work very slowly and you concentrate. Use so much white here because the white actually kills this vividness that I'm after. So, yeah, that's a good thing, right? More to some things that can explain the shape a little bit. This has to glide a little bit into the background or it becomes too, uh, too drawn. And we won't, don't want that. See, I use different kinds of. I use the back of the pencil, all kinds of shit. So, yeah, there was an orange here and here. The onion changed a little bit from yesterday, so that's kind of annoying. On the other day,
hope you get the point and can't when I concentrate this deeply it's very difficult for me to keep talking so I just have to watch what I do and it's kind of that when you get into that deeper flow uh, the brain tends to turn off the voice centers and stuff there's just so much the brain can do at once so then it becomes deep conversation deep then shuts down That's the bliss actually, it's the painter's bliss. Oh, it's become better, I can say. So, I'm gonna stop filming now for a while. It's probably enough. You probably get my point anyway. Okie dokie. Then, I think. Yeah, I'm not sure. Hard to say when one is done or not. <clears throat> it's always hard to say. But I think I reached my actually I need to bring it to exhibition so basically out of time anyway I think it became quite nice the thing is that usually I <coughs> To a dark background, which makes it easier to get these uh, sweet uh, the, uh, more romantic shadows, all the candy becomes very easy. This becomes more apologetic it is more direct it's more uh, yeah more real in a way so it's hard to sell probably be harder to sell also just sell it mm. but It is a different journey than always having these <coughs> very romantic shadows, contrasts. Trying to get some small detail in here so I can enhance it a little bit. Give it a little bang for the book. I think it's quite nice now. for hours now to go back and forth it's quite <laughs> quite nauseating actually because you sometimes you really feel you are ah, there I got it and then you just put on a couple of more <clears throat> brush strokes and then boom it's just gone and you said lost just like go lost <laughs> Where the fuck did it go? What happened? 
Yeah, strange. Also a little reflection here, like in the apple. And reflection in the onion from the wall. So. Is that okay? What do you think? What are you thinking? <laughs> you haven't seen it yet, so how can you think anything? How can you answer? You haven't seen it yet. See, this is what happens when you stand alone for two, two and three weeks. You don't see much people. Stop going to the gym, just go into this painting thing, and start talking to yourself. Luckily I have a camera on, so I have an excuse. I can say, oh, well, I'm not talking to myself, I'm talking to the camera. I'm talking to you. difficult just a lot of square words in this video fuck 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 no not a lot of one actually so then I give up I yield I surrender I surrender! Too late! He's a... Too late, fucker. Okay, now some... Actually, I was from a... Really, I really enjoyed uh, Bill Hicks. It's really brilliant uh, about the Iraq War. Saddam Hussein. Finally, it's, I surrender. Not good enough. <laughs> Too late. Okay, am I giving it up? Am I giving up? I have to wrap this up because I need to create some kind of 
suitcase or something to have it in. I have three more of these size paintings. So okay. Hard to see. It's so hard to tear myself away from it. Keep on seeing stuff that I have to do before I stop. Having some texture here, hair. This is the knife's edge. I have one more design. It's small. I don't know if people are actually able to see the difference actually. And you can wonder sometimes wonder what's the point of going that far, you know, fighting that hard. Which I actually do in every single painting. No matter is it good or bad or whatever, it's always a struggle, this tense struggle in the end between what is too much, what is too little. Did I go too far? Did I stop in time? It's really, really difficult to know. Uh, and it can be. Exhausting actually, especially if you are out of time. That is why I really do need to. If I want to pull my paintings now to the next level, to the 60%, I say my painting skills are when I look at the best 
maybe 40 50 percent maybe but then it becomes harder and harder to reach the hundred it's like the hundred is impossible to reach because that is you know like Rembrandt and it is uh, Vermeer and it is uh, Leonardo da Vinci and it is all these classics so I will never get there but the point is it's like light speed the more the more the closer you come to light speed the more energy you need to get further and in the end you have to you have used up all the energy in the visible universe long before you actually get there because you need basically an infinite amount of energy to get an object up to light speed um, digression yes but it is kind of the same here that you can actually come that far and then you reach that skill wall and it takes more more and more effort to break through that skill wall. So um, yeah. But I don't stop, I don't give up, I don't stop, I keep fighting the same battle every time. And right now I'm just manic, I can't stop, I see things, I want to be there. But I did have it now, and I lost it in the end because a little bit because I didn't stop when I should have stopped. Uh, it doesn't matter if I had more time on it because then I can really fuck it up and just bring it back later. But as it is now, I just need to close the deal and get on my fucking plane. So. I was actually going to sign this and I wind up by doing all kinds of other shit. It's typical. If I if I spend my time right, I might be able to reach at some point in the future sixty, maybe even seventy percent. I do not expect to go basically beyond that with the time I have in existence. So, uh, but that is an achievement within itself. But it, it comes all the way down to me really focusing my time. And if I would come with any advice to other artists, it is time don't spend your time on bullshit if you have ambition let the ambition be your life that was how people actually reach their goals
so. Try one more breastwork. Strategic one. Right there. Has to be with some light orange type of color and some. So difficult. You have no idea how difficult this is if you could even comprehend how this feels. The frustration of um, not feeling that you are where you want to be. It's really horrible. That was a nice one. So you see what happens now? Immediately I start working myself into this frenzy. That's funny because many times when I do exactly these things, it always comes to this point where you just want to take the whole fucking thing and you want to throw it into the wall and you are just going to leave. You will walk away, never look back, start doing something else, something that will not torment you for the rest of your fucking existence. But then again, what would that be? Yeah. 
Okay, I'll just stop because I can't really... I can't really... Take in anymore. I hope you appreciate this, what I'm doing for you now. Because I guess if you, if you are a painter who really love your work and you are honest, you will experience exactly what I do now. And people around you will say, oh, relax, it's nice, it's so beautiful. You say, no, it's nothing, it's just bullshit, you know. You see that? I didn't do that right, I didn't do this right. And that's the torture of being an artist, so let that be the fucking end. Okay, here it is. Another day, another finished painting. So, here it is. In frame. With uh, an another onion. I leave it colors. See how it worked with it. And, yeah. Good! Yeah. So, thanks for watching and uh, remember to share my videos and stuff.